few days ago, I, uh, I had a conversation with a person that, um, that really disturbed me. It was very painful for me to see that even people that are so-called believers, really, you see that those people are dedicating their lives into faith, into following Hashem, keeping the Torah, the mitzvot. And still, they're so far from certain understandings that are basics, are basic in, uh, in faith. And it, it was very hard for me to feel that. It was very painful for me to, to feel that. I really wanted to, to help that person and to support him. And um, actually the truth is that when we spoke, so I, it, it just, it hits me, it hit me and I didn't know how to deal with it while I spoke with that person. I answered him somehow, but it wasn't the complete answer. And then I, I walked with that sorrow, with that pain. And in the evening, in that day, someone else came to me and told me the same thing and like, it, it took me, like, it knocked me down completely. Like, I went to sleep so upset and, and I felt so bad for, for people. And in the next day, I recorded a, a, a Facebook Live, a short Facebook, of explaining this point and I really want to to talk to you about that thing and maybe to clarify something about faith. So, when we're talking about the Creator, so the name of Hashem, the name of the Creator is Bore Olam. He's the one that creates the world. That's His name. He's not the one that created in the past. He's creating the world now with us in the present. That's His time. That's when He's creating the world. The worlds, everything that exists. So from that understanding, we must come to the next simple step that is showing and telling us clear, with no doubt about it, that it is in His hands to do whatever He wants with His creation. He is creating nature, but He can change nature in every moment that he desires, that he wants. It's in his hands because he's the Creator. And we must get that point. It's so simple, but it's like it's so far from so many people. For me, it was so obvious from the beginning because that was the thing that pulled me into Judaism, into faith. When I was far from Judaism, so okay, everything was under nature. Like if I wanted to do something, so I had to run my car and then, then to go. I wanted to talk to someone, I had to use the phone and to, to, to call and, and everything. I wanted money, so okay, you need to... There were few ways you could work for your money and you can steal the money. It doesn't matter, you had to do something to make money. You can, you can beg to your parents and to whine that you want money. It doesn't matter the fact that you need to do something active to, to find money. But today, but in those days when it like hit me that, okay, there is Hashem in the world, so what does it mean? It means that there is a hidden spirit that runs the world behind the curtains. So it means that it is in His hands to change whatever I need Him to change. Whatever that is important for His needs, for His will, for His divine will, no matter how you're going to put it, it is in the hands of Hashem Barach to change the world as He wish, as He wants it to be changed. So now, it's written, that Hashem will follow the will of the righteous ones. So now you just need to check yourself how you become righteous. How you're going to convince Hashem to answer your prayers. But there is no way in the world that you will be able to do that unless you're going to really carve it in your heart, deep into your heart, in your brain, in your mind, in front of your eyes, always, that Hashem is ready and willing to do things for people, to save the world for the, the benefit of the creation, to make life better. 
And if not, so there is no reason to pray, and there is no reason to hope, and there is no reason to keep Torah mitzvot at all. If there is no salvation in the end, so what are we doing? All the purpose of us connecting ourselves to the truth, and serving, and committing ourselves, and working hard, and sacrificing, it's for something. It's not supposed to be the reward for you for the world to come, or for you to be rewarded in this world. No! It can be for the success of the entire world, but at least something needs to, to go somewhere. If you just do it and it doesn't change anything, so no one is doing things with no purpose, with no reason. At least to have some reason. And the reason can be amazing, can be fantastic. You can want it all for Hashem, you can want it all for for other people's benefit, great, you can, you can aim your heart to the highest places of them all. But at least you need to have something to start with. And that is the basic understanding that Hashem is willing to change things. So now, the thing that I wanted to talk about is the redemption. The salvation of the world, it will be beyond nature. But it must come to the hands of people that have the vessels to contain miracles beyond nature, means people with faith, that faith means beyond nature. What does it mean to have faith? That someone created the world in the past, and someone gave the Torah to Moshe, and Moshe gave us a bunch of rules, and now we're all committed. That's faith? That's not faith, that's history. That's part of the history. It's true, it happened. Someone, the one itself, created the world. Great, yes. It's part of history. Great. Now he revealed his wisdom through Moshe Rabbeinu and gave it to his people. Great. It's also part of history. Really it happened. Yes, and now when we're, they were standing in front of the Red Sea, so Hashem, the creator of the universe, opened the sea for them. Great. It's part of the history. That's what you learned. Why we need to remind ourselves of all of the miracles? Why we need to remind ourselves that He chose us? Why we need to remind ourselves of Purim, of Hanukkah, of Sukkot, of Pesach, of Shabbat, of the Creator, that He created the world, that He took us out of Egypt, that we always to remind... Why to remind ourselves on the history? To remember history? No! It's written on the Megillah, on the scroll that we read in Purim, that if a person reads the Megillah to, re to see what happened, but on, on to look at the past, so as a history book, as a history scroll, just learning what that happened before, so he's not fulfilling his obligation in reading the Megillah. When you read the Megillah, you need to remind yourself that Hashem Barach today is moving and running the world that he's supervising on the world, that you have a Hashverosh today, and that you have a Mana Rasha today, and that you have a Ster Amalkai and Mordechai Yehudi. You need to read the Megillah like it's happening to you today. In Pesach, in Lela Seder, we're saying to ourselves that we must remind ourselves, every person must remember that the miracle that took place in that time, in those days, never didn't happen only for our ancestors. You need to look at yourself like as Hashem took you now out of Egypt because you also went out of a certain Egypt and you also go between those mountains and you also need Hashem to open the sea for you and you need Him to fight for you and to protect you from the Egyptians that are threatening your life. Today, your enemies in your, in your house with, with your family as, as a nation and, and on. So if you look at all of what that we learned as part of history, so you lost the point, the main point, the main will of Hashem. From looking at the history, first of all, we really need to believe that it took place. But after you realize, yes, it's true, I do believe that it is in the power of Hashem to open the sea and to let us pass in a dry land between the walls of water. Yes, and I do believe in that. The people that were walking in those days, they found trees of fruits and they could drink sweet water from the walls of the frozen ice. And suddenly they found faucets and they saw wealth and, 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 and fruits and all kinds of candies and food and everything was served to them. 
and they were walking in the desert and they were protected by the holy clouds of honor and on and on. So after you come to that faith and you realize, yes, I do believe that those miracles took place, now the conclusion that comes out of that nice, amazing lesson in history is that those miracles are ready for us today. And if not, so what are you doing? Learning history? If you're not learning the lesson from history to today, even in school, you go and you learn about Germany in 1939. Okay, why are you learning that? You need to learn that, that you will know how that your nation will not going to be that Germany of 39. That's what you need to learn from history. And if not, and you're just learning history, so you're a 100% empty person with no purpose in life. If you learn history only because you're thirsty for knowledge, so it's worthless. You need to learn from your past, from the past of, of humankind, how to fix ourselves for the future. So if you see that Hashem is able to make miracles and wonders, and not only for a whole public, also for individuals, to answer the prayer of Rachel, to answer the prayer of Sarah, to answer the prayer of Yaakov, of Yitzchak. Great, amazing. Now you're going to say, okay, they were super righteous. I'm going to show you more people that were not as righteous as Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. And Hashem made miracles for them as well. So if you look at the miracles that Hashem is doing along the years to many, many people, you need to learn from that that we have that opportunity, that possibility to enjoy from those wonders that Hashem Barach is preparing for us for the redemption, not for the world to come. In the world to come you don't need miracles, you're dead, your soul is free, you can fly wherever you want. You need miracles here when you're in prison, when you're in darkness and there is no light and you need an outlet from your prison, from your exile, from your sorrow. There you need miracles. When you can't pay rent, then you need miracles. So if you don't have that faith that Hashem is handing diamonds and supplying and making wonders, so what are you doing here? I don't understand you. <laughs> I don't understand the person that is not ready to enjoy from what the Tashem Barach is ready to give. And he is. But the only thing that is missing is our faith. Because only a person that believes in Hashem, he's got the vessels to contain the bounty. Like the, the verse is saying, Ish emunot rav brachot. The person that got faith, and it's written emunot, he's got many, many faiths. How can it be? What? He believes also in the Bible, also in the Second Testament, also in the Quran, and also in the Chinese ancient uh, scripts? No. We're talking about a person that has only one straight faith in the Creator of the universe, but he can see Him in every situation in life. He believes in Hashem when he's dealing with his wife. He is seeing Hashem Barach when he needs money. He believes in Hashem when he's got issues with his children. He believes in Hashem when he's learning Torah, when he's doing Hidbodeduyot prayers, when he's working, when he's meeting people, when he's driving. He lives his life with the Creator of the world. So he's got a lot of faith. So that person that got a lot of faith, he can enjoy a lot and handle also a lot of blessings. He will be blessed in his house, he will be blessed in his business, he will be blessed while he's driving, he will be blessed. Why? Because Hashem is good for everything. Tov Hashem Lakon. So Hashem is good for Shlom Bayit, and Hashem is good for children, and Hashem is good for Parnasa, for money, and Hashem is good for your health, and Hashem is good to digest food. Hashem is good for everything you need. Because Hashem is good for everything. Just you need to have Him in mind while you're eating, while you're sleeping, while you're thinking, while you're walking, while you're hiding, while you're running, while you're chasing. You need to have Hashem in mind. And who is that Hashem? What is that faith? Is that faith that there is a Creator that can change and willing to change nature just for you? No matter who you are, what your height, how you look, how you sound, what your weight, how much money you have in your bank, and how much Torah you learned until today. 
Hashem doesn't care. Hashem, He loves you as an individual, as, a, as an only child. And if not, so I don't know in which Torah we believe. It's written that Rachamav al kol ma'asav, that His mercy, that His love is on all of His creations. Even when the Egyptians in that generation of Pharaoh were chasing after our nation into the Red Sea, and it was after that they saw with their eyes and they realized that they were wrong and they've been rebuked once and, and the second time and third time, and they saw clearly that they are wrong, that they're evil. Hashem shown it to them, and they, even though they decided to go and to kill, even though that they knew that they will die, like those uh, suicidal terror uh, terrorists, yeah, they were sick in their mind. They chose to die and to kill. So vicious and so cruel. But when they're drowning in the sea, after sinning and destroying and, and abusing us for years, for hundreds of years, now they've been punished. And they're drowning in the sea. And the angels, they want to praise Hashem. And they're about to sing to him. What Hashem Barach is saying to those angels? Don't sing. When my creations are drowning in the sea, you're praising me? Don't praise me. Hashem cannot stand the sorrow of his creations, even when we're talking about the most cruel creations. The heart is the most evil and cruel ones of them all. And Hashem, He loves. And Hashem, He cares. And it's not that Hashem let them kill. And it's not that Hashem let them do. Hashem stopped them. Hashem is punishing them. But with mercy, still with love. So how can it be that He doesn't love you? It's such a twisted, twisted mindset to think that Hashem is upset on you at you. And why that you're going to follow that advice? How can it be that a person will really fall in that trap to think that Hashem doesn't care about him? When every person, Rabbi Akiva said, every person must say that the wild, wide world been created only for me, means that you are the center of the universe and everything is ready for you. And even if you choose to give all your power and all your money and all your wisdom and all your time to other people, still Hashem made it all an option for you to succeed. So if you see that so many things are ready just for you, even oxygen, even water, even a little bit of food when you come, when you go, you have cars, you have trains, you have buses, you have, mm, you have signs, you have ways, you have so many opportunities to find your way. You have shoes, you have sneakers, you have pants, you have shirts, you have dresses, you have head covers, you have everything you need. You can put glasses. You know, 500 years ago, if a person couldn't see, he would die. 1,000 years ago, a person with eyeglasses of today, he would be called blind. He cannot function. He needs to be fed. If he wouldn't have a family that will feed him in the house, he can't do anything. Today, you can go and you buy glasses. You don't even need to go to, to, to a doctor, eye doctor. You can just go and buy in Walmart. You can buy your eyeglasses. Happy, go, nothing. You no problem. You don't need to know anything today. And you have everything. All the options are open. So now, you see all of that bounty that is ready for you. And you cannot recognize the love of Hashem to you. That Hashem will change nature. Do you think that to hold a mobile phone... It's something that built in nature. If you can talk to your friend in the Holy Land, in the other side of the world, you think that it's not beyond nature? If you have a car, if you get into a, a, an airplane and to fly from one land to the other, if you can do so many things, if you can put your stuff in the refrigerator and to save it for two weeks and then still to enjoy from it, is it not enough beyond nature for you? So people are falling again and again, over and over, to that trap of the evil inclination to tell us that there is nature. But there is no nature. Because there is a supervisor that is running nature. And he is deciding to hide the fact that he is supervising on you in such a precise way. And he is choosing just to hide it from you. The only mission that we have is to break that code and to go beyond those, those curtains, and to break that wall and to see through it. 
and to recognize the hand of, of, of the merciful Father that cares so much about us and that He loves us and that He's willing to give us everything that we need. And there is a way to achieve all of those miracles. And it's coming with prayer. Because there are rules of nature, but prayer is above nature. And prayer is a tool that can change nature. Prayer is a gift from heaven that we received, that while using that gift, we suddenly have an access, a way to break and to change the code of creation. And to bring down miracles and wonders to the world. So now, Amar Rabbi Hanin, Rabbi Hanin said, Amar Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, I heard Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa that he said that kol amarich bitfilato, that everyone that will pray longer and longer, more and more, and tefilato chozeret rekam, his prayer will not come back empty-handed, he will never be empty-handed. He will receive what that he asks for. So now the question is, are you willing to sacrifice from your time to receive the salvation that you want. Not for me. Don't pray for me. Pray for yourself. Pray for that car that you're working like a slave to have. Pray for that house that you're working like a slave to have. Pray for that shidduch that you're suffering hell because you still want to have that shidduch. Pray for those holy children that you suffer hell in your life because you still didn't got them, the ones that you hope. So, pray. Why you're sparing those salvations from yourself? Only because you lack of that simple, basic understanding that Hashem is willing to change the nature for you. So ask, why is not doing it? If He's so lovely and kind and generous, so why? He knows I'm stuck without that car. What? He needs my prayers. Why can't He just give me that car every day I'm suffering, every day to the subway, every day to suffer, every day to the, to the sorrow and to the tears and, and, and to the stress that I'm going through? Why Hashem needs my prayers? Look what happened with our holy nation when they went out of Egypt. They saw miracles. They saw wonders. Hashem made so many wonders that they've been convinced completely that Hashem is redeeming them now and they went out from Egypt. But... After all those wonders and miracles, when Hashem tested them in the desert, again, bitter water, a war, threatens from the nations, problems, difficulties, immediately they start whining. Lost all their faith, all their hope, doesn't know what to do. Hashem took us out to the desert to kill us here. What? There are not enough graves over there in Egypt that He wanted to bury us in the desert. So many weird concepts and ideas. Hey, holy nation, how you came to all of those bent, twisted understandings? Hashem wanted to kill us. Hashem hates us. And that's why He took us out of Egypt. What happened to your faith? Two minutes ago you were praising, you were clapping in the desert. You were... What happened? They didn't have the vessels to contain that bounty of all of those wonders. Why? Because they've been redeemed based on Hashem's kindness and not based on their effort. Only if you put effort and then your prayer has been answered, then you will be able to contain that bounty. If you prayed on a house and there was no chance in the world that you're going to get that house, but you know that you prayed, that you took out your guts praying on that house, and then really you got that, you will never going to forget the fact that Hashem answered your prayer because your parents didn't have the money, your parents-in-law didn't have the money as well, your job for sure didn't pay the mortgage, and you still got that house. So you know for sure that Hashem made that wonder only because that you pray and you've been answered. If you just got a house from somewhere, you're going to say, oh, I must make Seudat Odaya, I'm going to thank Hashem, we're all going to say Nishmat Kol Chai, we're going to praise Hashem, we're going to praise Him, we're going to thank Him, and that's it. From that moment, you finish that Seudah, I hope you're going to remember to say Birkat Amazon after eating that fat barbecue and drinking all of that scotch. When you're going to finish with that barbecue, for sure you're going to forget Hashem. <laughs> For sure, you won't remember the wonders and miracles that Hashem made you. Why? Because you're going to still have your father-in-law that is so wealthy and it's so worth it for me to say, say thank you and, what, and you're going to forget Hashem. So Hashem Barach is not answering the prayers because we're not praying. 
And how many prayers should we pray? But I did pray. Why are you saying I didn't pray? I was praying and I haven't been answered. But you know what you're asking for? You're asking for something that will stay with you for life. You're asking for something so beautiful and so gorgeous and so nice and so amazing and so fantastic. And I'm telling you, you're still in a risk to forget. And Hashem doesn't want you to forget. So Hashem Barachi brings you to that position that from that position you will have only one way to believe. Because He doesn't want you to forget Him. And it's much more important than that you will be married and that you'll own a house and that you won't have to pay for that car and that you'll have that apartment in Uman for Rosh Hashanah. All of those things that you want to achieve, it's amazing. But Hashem wants you not to lose Him for that apartment. Hashem doesn't want you to lose Him for your wife. Because if your wife will ask you, okay, now what are we going to do? And you're not going to have Hashem, so what are you going to do with Him? If you won't have Hashem, you won't know how to make her happy. You won't know how to respect her, how to honor her. You won't have the patience and the love and the understanding and the peaceful mind to have a healthy, holy relationship with your wife. So why that Hashem will destroy you? By giving you things without building those vessels before. And the only thing that we're missing is one, prayer. Prayer from the heart, prayer with faith with confidence, with understanding that Hashem can make wonders, that Hashem Barach is willing to reveal His endless love, His loving kindness to each and every single one of us. And He's not expecting you to be holy because only when He will make you holy, you will be holy. Before of that time, you won't be holy. Remember, who is purifying you? Your Father in Heaven. You can go to the mikveh a thousand times in your life and won't be holy. I saw cows and, 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 and pigs going out of, of the mikveh. You know which animals I saw coming out of the mikveh? Animals with beard, with peot, with kipot, with tzitziot, animals with tefillin rashi, animals with tefillin rabenu tam, animals, vicious, cruel animals, murderers, rapists are going to the mikveh to be purified from their sins. He's abusing children in the night and in the morning he will go to the mikveh to purify himself. And what with that kid? Oh, you know. Animals are going to the mikveh. That's not the solution. Mikveh is not your solution. If your intention is not to really be purified, to be humble like what you do when you go to the mikveh, you need to humble yourself. That's how you deep. You go deep. You're humbling yourself under the water to that point that you cannot go lower than that. That water are covering you, that you know that you're about to drown. You really want to be purified? Take out all your air. Clean yourself from all of the bad spirits, from all of the bad breath that you have. All of the horrible thoughts. Beg to Hashem, purify me. Lev tahor berali elokim. Create a pure heart to me. I need a pure heart. Veruach nachon chadesh mekirbi and renew the spirit that will be right, that I'll be alive, that I won't be corrupt, that I won't be evil, that I won't be bad. Atat omich gorali, King David is saying to Hashem Barach, Atat omich gorali, you were supporting my destiny to believe in you. Even the faith that you gave me, you gave me that faith. You supported, you built my path, that in the end of that path I'll count on you. You cannot receive faith unless Hashem is showing His face to you. When Hashem decides to hide His face, that's it. When Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, in that day I'm going to hide my face from them, Moshe Rabbeinu fell on His face, Moshe Rabbeinu fainted. There is no solution. If Hashem is hiding Himself from us, we're done. If you can see a glimpse of light, a, a beam of light, something tiny between the cracks, it means that Hashem Barach decided to reveal Himself to you. 
And now, okay, Hashem, you showed me a miracle. I was walking in the street and I was praying for a million dollars. I wanted to buy a mansion. I was crying, please. I want to buy a house. I want to buy a villa. I want to have a swimming pool. And I was begging and suddenly I found a quarter on the ground. So I'm picking that lousy quarter and I'm looking at heaven and I'm saying, come on Hashem, are you kidding me? That was what I was praying for. Are you making fun of me? Hashem is telling you, listen, I hear your prayers. I can answer your prayers. Your arrogant will reject you from taking that gift and to make another step in. Oh, now you're insulted. Oh, it's not what I was asking. Oh, I have so many difficulties. I was praying for my shidduch and now my wife, she can't understand me. I can't understand her. Why you gave up? You know on who you gave up? People are telling me, my wife, she's hard. My wife, she's this. My wife, she's that. I'm telling them, do you know who your wife is that you're talking so much Lashon around him? Do you think that you have some understanding about the purity and the holiness of that woman? Do you really think that you know who she is, who you're talking about? You don't know who you're talking about. You don't know her soul. You don't understand her mood, why she's upset, why she's angry, what is bothering her. Maybe she's been traumatized. Maybe she's been hurt. Maybe she's been insulted. Maybe she's been destroyed. And you don't know and you cannot reveal your mercy. That's your problem. You cannot reveal your love. Your love is not an unconditional love. You set terms and you decided when to love, only when you receive, only when you're also going to get. Also, I need to receive honor. Also, I need to be pleasured. All of those things are not written in the Bible. It's not written in the Torah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. The Torah is telling us that we need to become perfect. Everyone needs to ask himself when I'm going to become to be like Hashem Mamash, like Hashem Himself. When my actions will be like the actions of my ancestors, like the holy teachers and, and rabbis through the generations. When I'll become like them. It's written that like that He is merciful, you need to be merciful. Like that He is kind, you need to be kind. Like that He loves, you need to love. An unconditional love. Yes, that's His love. That's our faith. If that's what you believe, that's what you should give. And if you're not able, so you need to break yourself to pieces until you will be able. And if you don't want to do that, so it's your tough luck, it's your problem. That's why you're stuck in life, because you're not ready to give. To give over, to give more than you have. You need to respect your wife with more than you have. Tell me how you can do that. You cannot do that. But also, you can give something that you don't have. She wants to be honored. Okay, great, I want to give you. Now, she needs to receive more than you can give. How can you do that? Impossible, right? But also, another thing that is impossible is that Hashem Barach offered the Torah to all of the nations. And every nation had their reason to refuse. There was one nation that were very, very far from Hashem. They were a nation of thieves. They were desiring other people's properties and money. They were thieves. In those days, they were the thief nation. Now, when they saw that in the Bible it's written, Lot Ignov, you're not allowed to steal, they said, sorry, not for us. Passing it to the next one. Hashem offered it to a nation of murderers. They saw it's written, Lot Yitzach, you're not allowed to murder. Sorry, it's not for us. We blood, we like it, we must kill, we cannot keep it. They were honest. When Hashem in Barach offered the Torah to Am Israel, to the holy nation of Israel, they didn't ask what's written. They said, Na'aseh Nishma, we're gonna do, and then you're gonna tell us what. How can you say that? We're gonna do what that you're gonna tell us. Can you do something before you've been told to do something? How can you do? It's impossible. We're going to do what you're going to tell us to do. How can you say that you're going to do it? If you're going to tell you something too hard, the answer to both of those questions is equal. The will counts. They were ready to accept on themselves whatever Hashem will command them. 
And when they accepted that on themselves, in their will, it counted for them, it meant for Hashem, that they kept it all, like they were doing it all. Now you want to respect your wife with more than you have, there is only one way to do it. To be ready to do more than you feel that you're able to do. If you know that at 12 o'clock at night you go to sleep because you're done, you need to want to stay awake until 1 or 2 if she needs you. If you know that you can make $3,000 a month and she needs more because she cannot be satisfied with one bedroom apartment, she needs at least three with a backyard and a porch from the other side, you need to want. I didn't say go sign a contract. I'm saying that if you will want, Hashem will provide the way for you to sign that contract. But it depends on your will, in how you prepared yourself in how you wanted to commit yourself to Hashem. Because Hashem is beyond nature, right? That's what we were talking about. So you need to prepare yourself to be also beyond nature. And when you will set your mind that you're also not a regular creation that's made out of flesh and bones, just that you also have an inner soul that is connected from inside to a spiritual source, that he has all the power in the world, he can change the world. And now I have a link to him. I have a connection to him. So on that, based on that, you can believe that you can also make wonders in the world and to buy a house and to buy properties and to learn Torah and to have holy children and to get married with the most amazing, humble, great woman in the world and whatever. And the opposite, that you, a woman, will find your shiduch, your soulmate, that he will also be humble, also will be nice, also will be rich and also will take a shower every day. Everything you wish, everything you want, you can receive it, don't worry, it can happen, I know. Miracles can happen. Miracles can happen. You need to believe that miracles can happen. And if not, so you still don't have the vessels to be answered. Because you still don't believe that miracles can take place. If you believe that miracle can happen, you need to understand that you can make those miracles as well. Not only Hashem, also Hashem through you. Because who you are, except of a tool in the hand of that person, of that God, of that Creator. Who are you, except of a channel, to channel His light to this creation? So why that you won't bring miracles to the world? It's not you at all. That's the vessel. To understand that it's Him, and that He can do whatever He wants, whatever He desires. Because He is the one and only. Because He's creating and existing the world. And supplying and bringing and containing and supporting and developing and making wonders. That you can use your iPhone 7 to do so many things. If you have the merit to buy one. But if not, so you can pray. Here I gave you something to pray for. An iPhone 7. It's a great thing. To serve Hashem with, of course. To understand the gifts that Hashem gives to us. I give a class, I meet 20 people in that class. I'm checking the Facebook Live in the end of the class. 600 people, 700 people, 800 people. That's how the class finished. With 700 people watch that class. Now you don't see them. I can see them either, but they can see me, but they can see us. They are here with us right now. How can it be 700 people saw that class in the same time that we? It took one hour, 700 people watched that class. How? Because Hashem made it happen. It's impossible. It's beyond nature. This place cannot contain 700 people. But that small device can how Hashem wants. When Hashem wants, Hashem can make a piece of junk speaks and show pictures and show and stream video live from one side of the universe to the other. When Hashem wants, a piece of plastic and a piece of silicon can make the world change. And it's in our hands because hands of human people, regular normal people, not so normal, but people, <laughs> made that machine, made that device work. 
So it is in our hands to make other things happen as well. And miracles will go through us down to earth, down to this world. And like you see that today we can save people's life in hospitals with amazing devices that we have and amazing m medicines and miracles and, and, and ways of transportation. And when there is a woman that she's so sick, so even Donald Trump will donate his private airplane to take her from one place to the other to heal her and to save her life. So things can happen. A person will receive the opportunity to go to Donald Trump's private airplane to save his life when he doesn't even own a car. Why? Because Hashem wanted. Because Hashem can do whatever He wants. Because He's the Creator. So now to believe in Him, it's to believe that all of those wonders can take place in your house. To you. To who that you are. Why? Because Hashem is kind enough to make those wonders happen. And that's it. And that's the only reason why it can take place in your life. Because Hashem is kind. Because Hashem wants. But when we are following our fears and our negative sadness and, 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 and horrible thoughts that we have, so that's exactly what the Hashem Ibrach is trying to guide us and to let us know. You have two ways. You have two lanes. And you need to choose. You can choose good and count on Hashem and see miracles in life. And you can go to the other side and follow idols and follow your negative thoughts and your fears and your anxieties and all of the negative horrible thoughts against Hashem that people will talk to you and will tell you and will try to convince you to go into darkness, into the physicality of this world, into those curtains and into those obstacles and into believing in people and trying to find your way and doing all kinds of ishtadluyot, lack of faith. And if you will choose chas v'shalom to go to that path, so over there you won't find yourself and you're going to lose your identity and your happiness and your person can find only sorrow and, 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 and horrible thoughts and won't be happy and won't have no salvations. But it was you that chose to go in that path and you have the free choice in your hand. So really to choose to go after the light, to go to that right direction, it depends in, in your will. But you will want it. And if you will want it, you will receive it. And if you will put the effort to sacrifice from your time for your own good, to benefit your own life, you will be answered. And prayers are accepted. Just you need to pray for that. And how much? Until Hashem will say enough. And not because Hashem desires prayers. Hashem doesn't cash those prayers uh, with money and go partying. Hashem is building your own vessels. Hashem is helping you to have the stable and strong vessel to contain His bounty, to contain spirituality. When you want to contain a liquid in a jar, so the jar must be thicker and stronger, more stable and thick than the water, or else they won't be able to contain it. You cannot contain mud, earth, inside of water, right? The water won't hold it. Why? Because they're thinner, they're more delicate. So the strong um, earth will go through the water. You cannot put um, water into, into the air because the air is thinner and the water will go through like the rain, go through the air and go <coughs> down. Because you need the vessel to be stronger and thicker than the bounty that it contains. So now, when we're asking for spiritual salvations, when we want Hashem to reveal His kindness for us, we need to understand that the changes, the developments of our vessels must be physical, must be inside of us. And then we will contain the spiritual bounty. When you want spirit to come into your life, salvations, miracles, wonders, divine spirit, understandings, love, emotions, feeling, honors, respect, all of those wonderful things, you must change your physical vessels. You need to learn how to move yourself to the side, 
how not to talk all of the time, how to... Uh, I think that's a class that I'm not able to learn. <laughs> okay, to learn how to talk on better things. Check yourself. Are you able not to talk? No. Okay, so at least talk about positive things. We must work on ourselves if we want Hashem Itbarach to reveal His love on us. A friend of mine, a student of mine asked me, how can you receive Divine Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh? I said, you just need to want to use it for the good. That's it. If you want it for yourself, you can't have it. It's Hashem telling you secrets. Hashem won't tell you until He will find you worthy and loyal enough to tell you secrets. What are you asking to know? You're asking to know things that this person never told no one. So at least you need to know exactly what you're going to do with that knowledge. Because else Hashem won't give it to you. Why that Hashem will tell you that person's secrets? That you're going to go and tell everyone else that you're going to laugh at him, that you're going to destroy his life because of that, or that you're just going to go with your foreign thoughts and do whatever you feel like with his secrets? No! Hashem will never do that to him to tell you his secrets. So why that Hashem will answer your prayer to know how to help people when He will find you worthy and loyal enough not to use that knowledge for anything bad. And this is the gift that people are receiving while after only as a result of sacrificing their lives for Hashem. And then Hashem gives His eyes to the righteous ones. And then Hashem gives the Divine Spirit to the holy ones. And then Hashem gives His wisdom to the pure ones, to the ones that were serving, that were committing themselves, nullifying themselves to Hashem. Great! But you need to pass a few tests before you will be answered on your spiritual salvations that you're expecting for, that you're waiting for. And as long as we're putting the effort, it's like to invest in your own house. You need to be happy to sacrifice because you're just putting money into your own bank account. All the deposits that you deposit are being treasured in your treasure box. It's all waiting for you. You're not giving it to no one else. It's all waiting for you. Hashem is preparing your vessels that your salvation will come, that your prayers will be answered. And that's the redemption. And I know I'm repeating myself, but I don't know. I think you're asleep. So, please, I'm begging. Believe in miracles. Believe that miracles can happen to you because of the unconditional love of the Father to His children, of the Holy Creator to His children, to us, to you, to you, to you, to you. To every one of us. A person came to me today. How did you hear about me? I was searching something else in YouTube and suddenly I saw your face and I clicked and that's it. Great. Hashem saved his life. He will testify on that. I don't need to testify. Hashem saved his life. He was searching for something else. He was writing the most beautiful person in the world. And <laughs> And Hashem Ibarach helped him. <laughs> you know which other pictures you can see if you search for that thing? <laughs> Crazy people. <laughs> the gift of heaven, and that's the main way, an honest way of Hashem Ibarach in his world, is to reveal his loving kindness. What does it mean, loving kindness? Love that not depends in your actions. Love that not depends in who that you are. Love that depends only in the love of the Creator. To reveal His love on us even when we're not worthy. Even when we're not worthy, He reveals His love on us. So we must follow Him with our eyes closed, to count on Him, and to follow Him with confidence and with love. And all of our prayers will be answered. Amen. Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.